Okay, favorite wedding gear I use this year. Let's go. Number one, the DJI Mini 3 Pro. It's amazing how much DJI was able to cram into this little drone. 4K 60, 10 bit color, and it's super quiet. We also have this remote with a screen which makes getting the drone up and flying much faster. This is really helpful when you're at a fast paced wedding and you need to capture shots as quickly as possible and move on. The novelty of using your phone when drones widely became available quickly wore off because I would get notifications during flights and that got really annoying when I was trying to get smooth shots. If you're someone like me who is using a Mavic Air 2, then I would strongly recommend getting the Mini 3 Pro because I really don't think you can go wrong. Number two, the Zoom F3. Now, personally, I don't own one, but I have used it numerous times and it's great. It solves a loud problem with a simple solution, 32-bit float recording in a small and affordable package. At a wedding, you never know when someone will shout into a microphone peaking your audio. 32-bit float recording is your best ally when that happens because in simple terms, it lets you raise or lower the volume of your track if it's peaking or if it's too quiet. Now, it isn't a complete fail safe, but it does give you a fighting chance in post. Think of it like editing a raw photo or video. That raw file has a lot more information, letting you manipulate the overall look of the picture. It works the same way when editing WAV files recorded in 32-bit. Number three, the DJI RS3 Pro. The amount of accessories available to the DJI system, in my opinion, is unrivaled. On my setup, I'm using a ring grip with some mounting accessories, all made by Tilta, which allows me to attach a monitor and a V-mount battery, which powers the monitor, the gimbal, and my camera if I wanted to. I also have this mounting plate made by Small Rig that lets me attach a power bank to power my camera because I can't swap out batteries fast enough on the fly due to how my FX3 is positioned. And if I was to move it, I'd throw off the balance and then I'd have to rebalance and it, it would just be a whole mess. The only battery I change is the V-mount one and that's easy. The hand grips on the side also let me control a DJI or Tilta focus motor. I use this to control the zoom and focus on my lens. Using the setup makes the RS3 Pro more robust and makes me look more professional. People always ask me questions at weddings about it, and I can tell that they're impressed. I used to pretty much shoot everything at a wedding with a monopod and an 85 millimeter lens, but in my market I'm in, I wasn't seeing the success that others were having. When I started to use gimbals, things began changing and I noticed an uptick in inquiries. I still love my old style of shooting, but I am first and foremost running a business, and sometimes you have to follow the money. Number four, the Rode Wireless Go 2. This little device has been a great backup recorder during ceremonies and receptions. Plus, the results are amazing. If you haven't seen my video on how I use these, I basically strap them to a microphone and I instantly have a solid backup. I also use it for live streams and to film these YouTube videos. I bought these when they first launched, but if you're in the market for wireless lav mics right now, I would recommend getting the DJI mic system. I've heard better things about them in terms of features, plus the charging case is something I wish the Rode had. But I've literally heard the sound quality of both, and I think they're the same. Nowadays, the Rodes are much cheaper than the DJI ones, so if you're on a budget and you know, you're strictly looking for audio quality, get the Rode Wireless Go 2. Number five, the Nanook 935 hard shell case. I've actually been using this case for the past two years and I don't think I'll be switching for the foreseeable future. It directly competes with the Pelican Air 1535, but I think the Nanook is actually better. Both cases are designed to be carry-on size so they can be stored in the overhead bins on a plane. When I travel for destination weddings, I want to have all my gear that I can't afford to lose on my person. I also really like the locking mechanism on the latches. In order to open the case, you first have to push down the center piece, which then allows you to lift up the main lock. I feel I can drop the case from a couple stories and everything in the case will be fine. The trolley handle has two stopping points, which accommodates people of different heights. You can pull it out by pressing down on the release mechanism built right into the handle. The top and side handles are nice as well as they both have their own clever touches that make the overall case modern and very thought out with the user in mind. Also, it's a Canadian brand and it comes in different colors if you're into that. Honorable mention, the Hollyland Solicom C1 headset. I had it, I enjoyed it, but I ended up returning it because I think it still needs some improvements. The Solicom C1 shines in quiet environments. I could whisper into them and my second shooters could hear me no problem. They're crystal clear, but that clarity comes with a downfall. It picks up 
everything. This is especially apparent in loud environments to the point where they become almost unusable. I've also used the EarTech Ultralights and they do a much better job of canceling noise, plus they have a dual cup model. The sound just isn't as clear as the C1s. I think if Hollyland comes out with a C2 model keeping the same sound clarity with better noise reduction and dual cups, that would definitely, definitely be a top five piece of gear for next year. All right. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the new year. Happy holidays, everybody. Peace.